Hi everybody, welcome to Christensen Wealth Management. I'm Michael Christensen. Thanks for taking time out of your day to watch this stock market update and industry sector review for the week beginning Monday, May 14th, 2018. Before I jump into the charts of the indexes and industries, I'd like to begin with the quote of the week. This week's quote is from William Hazlitt. William Hazlitt was born 1778, died 1830. He was an English writer, drama and literary critic, painter, social commentator, and philosopher. He is now considered one of the greatest critics and essayists in the history of the English language, placed in the company of George Orwell. William Hazlitt once said, The love of liberty is the love of others. The love of power is the love of ourselves. Those are some wise words from... William Hazlitt. Well, we've had some additional volatility. Sorry I couldn't uh, make a video last week. I was enjoying a week with my family in southwest Florida. We enjoyed the beach, doing a little bit of fishing, a little bit of sailing, but mostly just enjoying uh, spending time with each other. And we came back with smiles and good tans and uh, look forward to just jumping right back in and getting back to these markets. The Dow, S&P, and NASDAQ had a bullish run last week, but the indexes remain mixed. The utilities had a little bit of a slip last week. The energy stocks continue to run, and many of the other indexes are uh, running to the upside as well, and some just haven't moved. So rather than talk about it, I'd like to just jump right into the charts, beginning with the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Before I begin, I would like to say that the following charts you're about to see are six-month charts from November 14th, 2017 to May 14th, 2018. Beginning with the Dow Jones Industrial Average, you can see that the red five-day moving average is back above the blue 20-day moving average, confirming short-term strength. But we're just close, but not quite, with the 20-day moving average about to cross over the purple 50-day moving average, so we still are hanging on to a little bit of intermediate-term weakness and a little bit of mixed signals there. Short-term strength and still intermediate-term weakness. But if we get any more rally out of the Dow Jones this week, it won't take much for it to push that 20-day moving average back above the 50, and we'll have an intermediate-term strength confirmation. If I switch this chart over to the candlestick chart that was in the prior video, a couple of weeks ago and you connect the highs of this Dow Jones Industrial Average <clears throat> you can see that we had the high of the all-time high of January 26th and then another high of February 27th and another high or lower high of March 12th we broke above it failed broke above it failed and then beginning on May 4th we had a little bit a serious rally here and it appears on some of my other technical indicators that it's running out of steam, but there's nothing uh, weak about this rally. It's just power to the upside, and we'll just have to see how far it's willing to go. So keep an eye on the Dow Jones Industrial Average and the social media pages for Christensen Wealth Management, and if anything changes, I will certainly let you know. As for right now, I would just simply use a little extra, a little more caution just for another few days on the Dow Jones Industrial Average until we get that 20-day moving average in blue back above the 50-day moving average in purple. Here's the chart of the S&P 500 stock index, and as you can see, the 5-day moving average in red is back above the blue 20-day moving average, so we have a short-term strength confirmation. And the blue 20-day moving average is still just slightly below that purple 50-day moving average. So we're hanging on to the intermediate term weakness signal by a thread. We'll just have to wait and see if the rest of the week of May 14th turns out to be a positive one. If it does, then that 20-day moving average should easily pass up above the 50, giving us a strength confirmation. And as you can see, if I connect those highs from January 26th on down. Uh, we are clearly broken above the downtrend for now. The downtrend that began on January 26th had a second point of March 9th 
and another point here on April 18th and we broke above it pretty firmly on about April 8th. So uh, this breakout is pretty is very solid, uh, nice nice strength. Just need to see if there's any enthusiasm behind it. The volume of trading for the Dow and the S&P and the Nasdaq has been pretty light. That just means that this rally is rather thin. So uh, we need to give it a few more days and see if these markets can continue their rally to the upside. For now, remain cautious for just a few more days, closer to the middle to the end of the week, and we'll see where this market takes us. Here's the chart of the NASDAQ 100 stock index, and you can see that the 5-day moving average in red is well above the 20-day moving average in blue, indicating short-term strength, and the blue 20-day moving average has crossed back above the purple 50-day moving average, in a, indicating intermediate term strength as well as of May 14th. The problem that we have here is that there is a possible head and shoulders pattern which is potentially bearish um, or a sign of potential decline going forward. We have the left shoulder right here that was formed on January 26th. The high or the head of the head and shoulders is March 12th and as of May 11th and 14th we may have a right shoulder here that has formed. We need to see this NASDAQ get a little more strength a little higher in order to uh, negate the head and shoulders pattern. But as of right now there's no denying that this has been a solid rally from April 25th on up to May 14th and the two indicators are definitely showing strength. So um, the rest of the week will be interesting to see, but um, right now it's it could go either way because this point right here on January 26th is going to uh, provide some serious overhead resistance for this NASDAQ and make it difficult to get any higher. And if it does, that is extremely bullish and good for stock investors. If this is a head and shoulders pattern and it turns out to be bearish, then that is not good for stock investors. So I'll keep an eye on it for you. And if I see any additional information come to, uh, come to light, I will certainly let you know. Here's the first of our industry charts, the Information Technology Stock Index. And you can see the five-day moving average in red is well above the blue 20-day moving average, confirming short-term strength and the blue 20-day moving average is now above the 50-day uh, moving average in purple confirming intermediate term strength as well so things are looking very good the last week or so for information technology especially since we broke above this prior high from april 17th and we did that on may 7th so we broke above that prior high came up here and we're testing this high from march 12th and in order for this rally to continue, I don't really need to say that we need to break above this high and make some new highs in order to press on more to the upside. So this is a moment where we need to watch and see if the technology stocks can break above this March 12th high and start to go higher. If it doesn't, well, it's going to just turn right around and start to head lower over the next week or so. And um, that will be a very big red flag. For now, um, things are looking good. I will just, uh, I'll give you any information as I see it in the days ahead. Here's the S&P 500 Consumer Staples Stock Index. And this is one of those industries and index charts that really gives me some concern about this current stock market environment. This Consumer Staples just cannot get a break. Even with the Dow and the S&P and the NASDAQ rallying strongly, over the last five to seven trading days or maybe more the consumer staples just can't even move it's still stuck down here without even a pulse so that is very concerning to me right now we've got that five day moving average in red still well below the 20 day moving average in blue <clears throat> and that 20 day moving average is pulling away to the downside from the 50 day moving average in purple so we've got a short-term weakness confirmation and a intermediate term weakness confirmation 
except the intermediate term weakness is getting weaker by the day. So that, that gives me some very big concern. So we'll just have to keep an eye on it for right now, but lots of uh, caution to be taken from this chart. So I'll keep you posted. Um, Staples not looking good for now. Here's the S&P 500 Industrial Stock Index, and we have the five-day moving average now back above the blue 20-day moving average, indicating a short-term strength confirmation. But that 20-day moving average in blue is still well below the purple 50-day moving average, indicating continued intermediate-term weakness, and they're not even attempting to cross each other. They're just going parallel. So that means that there is no uh, current strength. There is a lot of uh, indecision, I guess you could say. One other thing similar to the consumer, consumer staples chart I just showed you is this chart gives me a lot of concern as well. If I connect the highs of this chart from January 26th, you will see that the industrials have not been able to break above their declining trend line. We have the January 26th high. We have it touch again here on March 9th. We have it touch here again on April 18th. Well, it's starting to roll over a little bit to the downside on May 14th and well, we'll just have to keep an eye on it. But if this in fact does continue to roll over and head down again the week of May 14th, that is not a good sign. If you have industrials that can't break out of a declining trend while the Dow and the S&P and the NASDAQ are rallying to, back to their highs, that is a big, big warning, a big red flag to me. You have consumer staples continuing to fail, industrials looking extremely weak. Um, that just to me is a little bit suspicious. So for now, use extreme caution with industrials as well. And we'll see if this thing can power up and get above that declining trend line in red by the end of this week. Here's the chart of the S&P 500 Utilities Stock Index. And this has been one of my favorite charts of the last few months. We've been in this very nice trading range that began somewhere around February 8th. Just bouncing off the tops and the bottoms. We got a little bit of ahead of ourselves on April 27th and then came back inside and got hit pretty hard on May 8th and a little bit more on May 9th, but rallied up a little bit. And let me go ahead and extend this line back into the future to where we are now. And as of right now, utilities is still in its range, but we're sitting there on the bottom of the range. So this thing needs to find some strength here the week of the 14th and try to power back up. So um, if we fall back below that line, then we'll have to rethink this particular index. But as of now, it's still alive. It's still hanging in there. And the five-day moving average is below the 20-day moving average, indicating short-term weakness. But the 20-day moving average in blue is trading parallel to the 50-day moving average in purple. So we still have some intermediate term strength and that strength is not deteriorating yet. Everything still looks to be pretty reasonable for utilities. We'll see if we can just hang on and stay inside this channel uh, for a while longer. Here is the chart of the S&P 500 consumer discretionary or cyclical stocks. As you can see, we've been in a very nice solid uptrend since the lows of April 2nd, the 50-day, or I should say 5-day moving average in red is above the blue 20-day moving average, indicating short-term strength. And as of last week, the 20-day moving average in blue crossed back up above the purple 50-day moving average, confirming intermediate-term strength as well. So things are looking pretty good for consumer discretionary. The sky is looking pretty sunny at the moment. Uh, the only thing that may pause a uh, challenge is are these uh, prior highs back here from February 26th and May 12th and especially this big one up here but right now it's cruising um, looking pretty strong and we'll just have to wait and see if that continues. 
Here's a chart of the Dow Jones Financial Stock Index. And you can see over the last week or two, we've had a very nice rally off the bottom of May 3rd. The five-day moving average in red is above the blue 20-day moving average, indicating short-term strength. But we still have the blue 20-day moving average below the 50-day moving average, indicating intermediate-term weakness. Right now, there is one other thing that is uh, extremely concerning to me, and that is just like the industrials chart. If you connect the highs of January 26th with the second high and the third, we have a very big concern in that it's still in a declining trend. This January 26th high was followed by this high of March 9th, and this was touched again May 10th and May 11th, and it turned down on the 14th. So the financial stock index may have hit a brick wall and may be turning back down. We'll see where we go the rest of the week. But if that line cannot break above that declining trend line in red, then that is potentially very bearish and continue to use caution on the financials at this time. Here's the chart of the Dow Jones Oil and Gas Stock Index, and you can see that the five-day moving average in red is rocketing higher, as is the 20-day moving average. So we have a five-day moving average in red above the blue 20-day, so we have short-term strength, and we have a lot of it. The 20-day moving average in blue is pulling away to the upside from the 50-day moving average in purple, so we have increasing strength on the intermediate term as well. The one concern that this chart has is that we are beginning to test the highs of January 22nd. So we'll see if the oil and gas index hits a wall as it gets up here as well and can't get any higher. But as of right now, it's looking really good. It just needs to get above this January high in order to continue higher. If it gets rejected and turns down, then that will be bearish. Uh, right now, though, I see a lot of blue sky for oil and gas in the energy sector. Here's the Dow Jones Transportation Stock Index. Airlines, railroads, trucking, that kind of thing. And this is annotated with the two parallel trend channels that I used in the prior video. If I go ahead and extend those out a little bit, you can certainly see that the trend channel is still intact. It hasn't broken above it or broken below it. So... A lot of indecision. Uh, we had a down day on May 14th, so we'll see if potentially that's a setup for another run back down to the bottom parallel line. Right now, there's just a lot of indecision for the transportation stock index. The five-day moving average, though, is above the blue 20-day, indicating some short-term strength. But the 20-day moving average is... Uh, is above the 50-day moving average, indicating intermediate-term strength as well. So for the last week or so, we've got a lot of strength going on because we've rallied from here on May 3rd up to this point of May 11th. So we'll see if we can break above that trend line or trend channel this time. But having turned down on May 14th gives me some concern. So uh, use caution on the transportation stock index until we can get out of this trend channel. Here's the chart of the Dow Jones Healthcare Stock Index. And you can see that as of May 14th, we have a five-day moving average crossing up above the 20-day moving average in blue, indicating a new short-term strength confirmation. But the blue 20-day moving average is still below the 50-day moving average, indicating continued intermediate-term weakness. The price, though, has rocketed higher since May 8th and made a nice rally here and taken out these two prior highs. That's a very solid sign of strength. And if I change this chart to a candlestick chart and connect the highs like I did in the prior video, you will see that the declining trend line has been broken. We formed it beginning on January 26th. Touched it again on March 13th and March 14th. Touched it again on April 18th. Broke it, but failed. And now, as of April uh, May 10th, 
May 11th and May 14th, we've powered up and made uh, and, and broke out of that declining trend. So we'll see where healthcare is uh, going, but it's definitely looking stronger and looking good, uh, looking better for the 14th of May. Here is the last chart of the day, the Dow Jones Real Estate Stock Index. We currently have the five-day moving average in red, well above the blue 20-day moving average, indicating short-term strength. And the blue 20-day moving average is above the 50-day moving average, indicating intermediate-term strength as well. Right now, this uh, rally has been very solid. It began here on uh, about April 25th, powered to the upside, and took out this prior high of March 16th. So right now, the only thing that I see causing some uh, possible stress for real estate is this uh, consolidation or a little bit of a roller coaster over here from January. If we can continue this trend higher, then that would be great for real estate. But right now we did have two down days on May 11th and on May 14th. So right now it looks like blue sky and sunshine, but we'll just take it one day at a time. And if I see anything, I'll let you know. Thanks again for watching this market update. Hope you found the charts and information useful. And before you go, please do me a favor and click the subscribe button on this YouTube channel and click the little bell next to it. So you will be notified whenever additional videos are posted. And in the summary description of the video, you will find links to the Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter pages and webpage for Christensen Wealth Management. Please visit those if you use them and click the like or follow button on the social media pages. So throughout the week, I can communicate with you quickly and efficiently. And then I plan to see you in about another seven days with another one of these videos. So have a great day and a great week. I look forward to talking to you soon. Bye-bye.